Well, we are underway. The landscape has changed slightly in the last six days. I was here six days ago doing a little pre-scouting to see if there was any way possible to get llamas in here, and there's not. But uh, it was bare ground then. Yeah. It was a little warmer, too. It was definitely warm. It was uh, 13 degrees when we left the truck, 16 uh, degrees, I think, yeah. something like that, at noon. So uh, I think it's getting down to seven tonight, but then it warms up from here. It gets up to, I think tomorrow night's 11 and the next night is like 19 or something. So it's all good. A warm spell. Yeah. We've had a, I don't know, rough? <laughs> I don't know if rough's the right word, but a different elk season. So we thought, you know what? Why not cap it off with something completely epic? Let's go sleep in the snow in single digit temperatures and maybe an elk will wander by yeah now this area we're going into if uh e-scouting and research proves to be somewhat correct this should be the path the elk take to migrate down but where we're going is kind of the holding ground where they kind of hold up before they migrate so there's no easy way in there there's no road within six miles five miles six miles no motorcycle trails so all the elk get pushed in there from hunting pressure that's where they stage to transition to migrate so and we're, count we're, we're counting on uh, <laughs> scooping them up with butterfly nets yeah but, now it'll be a, an adventure we're going to plan on we brought enough gear to stay for four days and if the hunting's good and we need to we'll pack back out and restock leave camp in there and then go back in if it's not good, then we'll pack camp out and we've got a little base camp set up up on top of the mountain. As long as it doesn't snow anymore, we should be able to get out before spring. Yes. <laughs> That's the plan. Well, we made a decision. We're gonna continue on with the normal, original plan. So we're gonna drop down in the bottom here Climb up to the top there. Hope we get there by dark. Maybe we'll the glass over on this side and then tomorrow morning we'll glass back on this side and make a decision from there. But milk in here. There's a reason they're in here. stayed pretty warm in here until it would you could start getting cold until the fire was dying down so put another couple of logs on and good for an hour and a half and then it would be out but it's 
just about daylight right now, so we're turning the little stove red and getting our boots on, get ready to walk down the ridge and shoot a couple elk.
know it if you're a rifle hunter. Because there's nowhere to see him. This is like the most open spot we've had. It's probably 100, 120 yard visibility. I did. When I first sat down here, I heard a little bugle and then a cow call. I was sitting here, I saw some movement down through the trees. I pulled a binocular and there was a pretty nice bull. 20 cows and a couple spikes that filtered through down the hill, but the cow called once more and the bull let out a little growl and I haven't heard him or seen him since. So. We've done a pretty good loop and we've got back in, seen all that we want to see, and there's just nowhere to set up to be able to watch a hillside or anything, and it's too noisy to try to still hunt through the timber, so. We're going to make our way back towards camp, and camp has the best vantage point. Right from camp, you can see multiple open hills, so let's go build a fire, sit there, eat lemon Oreos.
We spotted a bull. It's in a killable spot. And that's the first time that's happened so far. So we can't even see how big he is. But we're going to go get set up just in case his head's behind a tree. But we can tell he's a bull just from his body. It looks like a good sized body. Probably at least a 16 inch spike. But it's in a great place as far as being able to kill it. And it's in an even better place as far as being able to pack it. So we're gonna go get set up. Wait for him to stand or move his head or something. in the light stripe.
That's not a cow, it's not a bull. Yeah, a smaller bull.
That makes me cold just rewatching oh, that. I thought the last day of our archery hunt was cold. We got snow and on and collapsed tents there. This was uh, no snow falling. No. But if it would have, it would have probably warmed up 30 degrees. I think it was 7 degrees Yes. that night. It was a cold, treacherous hike. Man. So I went in a week before to scout just to see if we could get llamas in there. And I realized too many blowdowns. There's no way we could cut out a trail. There's no way to get llamas. And I'm not talking blowdowns that are 12 inches off the ground. We're talking three, four feet high, belly rolling over all of them. When I went in there, there was no snow on the ground. So I was able to get up on the blowdowns and literally jump from log to log and cover a yeah. little bit of distance that way. But I didn't have a heavy pack on and there wasn't any snow on the ground. Fast forward a week, yeah. we're in there, there's six inches of snow, it's freezing cold, the logs are treacherous slippery now, yeah. and we've got to carry everything in there on our back. So yes. I don't remember, were we, I think we were in the 60s for weight in the packs. Yep. We each had right around 60 to 65 pounds, yep. somewhere right, right in there. And we're going in four days, setting up, and then figure we'll hunt for four days, and by then we'll either have decided there's no elk here and we're coming out, or we've killed something and we're coming out loaded. But it took us, I think it was nine hours to yeah. get in there, five miles, which is about four <laughs> times slower than our normal hike when we carry a heavy pack in somewhere, uh, just because of it was straight up, straight down, straight back up, over blowdowns, and just, it was rough going. But once we got in there and got camp set up, we knew we were gonna be okay. We were already seeing elk. Yep. And so that first full day that morning, I wanna say we spent eight or nine hours again and only made it four miles, two, two and a half miles in or two miles in and two miles back out. Yeah. And that's all the country we could cover. Yeah, it was just, and it was cold. It's not, I mean, you were kind you of- You want to keep moving. You would kind of get warm, but you couldn't stop. Yeah. And there's no easy way around it. We'd think, okay, here's some new growth. It'll be easier to walk through, but the new growth had down timber in Inside it as well. It and snow falling down your back. And it was, just brutal going and the other the, the other hard part was the snow's crunchy there's no shooting lanes i mean for a rifle hunt you've got 60 maybe 80 yards if we came into what we thought was a big opening and that's all the farther we could see so there's no way you're going to sneak up on something bedded just crunchy snow they can hear you from 300 yards away and so there were several times we'd see tracks like well we bumped those elk but the other problem was when you'd get to an opening where you could see in glass, it was at least a thousand yards and there's no way you could get any closer to it. If you started dropping down, you'd have timber in the way, you know, it just, there, there weren't very many good openings to sit in glass. And that, we, we quickly <laughs> realized this was going to be a tough hunt. Yes. And there's definitely, we're seeing elk. Yeah. Across the canyon from us. <laughs> just can't see them through a scope. And we're hearing elk. It's uh, October 30th, 31st, and there, and there are elk bugle, like three or four different bulls that responded. Yeah. And of course, it's the lazy post-rut bugle, but you're able to hear an elk. That's yeah, that's a good thing when you're rifle hunting. So. Yes, and they were responding. And yep, we did. Uh, we got down on. We hiked in, you know, the farthest point that we made it to that first full day and had a bull growl and heard some cow calling and saw a decent bull. I couldn't tell exactly how big, but a mature bull uh, in the one gap I had that was probably like, I don't know, 600 yards or so down there. Just happened to filter through the trees and then they were gone, never heard them or saw them again. But that's really the only thing, even remotely within range, that we were seeing other than those cows we saw, but yeah. got there. Then that night, I think we heard wolves howling across the canyon and then uh, woke up the next morning and right from camp spotted elk over on the hillside. And like we kind of figured that's really the only hillside that we have that's we can get within range and it's still a pretty long shot. But yeah. from camp, I want to say it was about 
900 yards across there. And we could move down the hill and right before we got in the timber and lost visibility of the opposite hillside, I think we got within about 500 yards. So yeah. that's what we did, spotted an elk and uh, it was a nice bull. And well, I spotted an elk. John saw the elk. Yep. Donnie, I, Donnie struggled I saw to spot that, the elk. I saw it with my binoculars. <laughs> I saw it with my bare eyes. I don't know how many times I said, Donnie, are you seeing it? Donnie, can you see the bull? <sighs> Donnie, are you on it? So Corey's gun's the, uh, the new Sig Sauer, Sig Cross Magnum. It has a little more reach than my 6.5. It's beyond what I'm going to take a shot at with the 6.5. Yeah, because that bull, I think we ranged it like 520 or yep. 540 or something. And so I decided... I was going to use Corey's gun, and I don't have a contact in this eye. I did not have LASIK in this one, so I can be able to see close. Do you remember me questioning Donnie last year about only getting LASIK done in one <laughs> eye? And how odd that would be, and how many issues it would probably cause? Yeah. Yeah. Typically, I just wear a contact in it. So you got LASIK in one eye, yep. and then you wear a contact in the other eye. Yes, when I'm out in the hills. Okay. And that morning, you didn't have your contact in your second eye. Correct. So you had a blurry second eye and a LASIK adjusted yep. eye. Correct. And I have my rifle scope set up the focus on it without the contact in so I can see. But I was dialing your focus in from 200 yards to 500 yards. It that never, didn't do it? It never cleared it. It's the... The end of the scope yeah. needs to be in or out to focus that part. <laughs> I could not find the elk. I thought I was hunting with my kids again when they were first starting to hunt. <laughs> it's like, if you see the elk there, you've got to see that elk. It's on the wide open hillside. It's right there. And I would look up from the scope and I can see it. I look back through the scope and I can't see it. It gave me a glimpse of what it's going to be like hunting with Donnie in 15 years. Yeah. Exactly. Where's it at again? I yeah. can't find the elk. <laughs> yeah, no. we, we could have used that little side eye scope on the... <laughs> the little periscope? Yeah, the periscope. Okay, you're on him. Go ahead and just pull the trigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah it was uh, It was frustrating, but at the same time, it, I didn't get too frustrated. I just thought, you know what, it'll happen when it happens, yeah. and maybe that's not the bull we're supposed to shoot. Although... It kept coming out on an open hillside. John's on the bull, and then finally Donnie finds it, gets on the bull, and in his moving around to get adjusted, he sat on John's tripod and bumped the camera, and then John couldn't find the bull. <laughs> so that uh, that bull, he didn't realize it, but that was his lucky day. It was very lucky for him. <laughs> uh, but I think we're on to something. Spotting elk on the open hillside across from camp, and... Uh, Hopefully Donnie's got his eye figured out now. You did put your contact in there on the hillside. Put my contact in and I could see great. Excellent. Well, let's just hope we can find a bull laying over there on the hillside in the next episode. Yes. So, we're going to talk about failure analysis. And while it probably would be rightful to uh, <laughs> talk about target acquisition through a scope as a failure for this episode... I'm going to talk about the area we're hunting. And, you know, we did a lot of uh, e-scouting. I scouted the weekend before, and we just really felt this was an area where it was going to be a sanctuary for elk, where they were going to get pushed to late season uh, before they actually migrate all the way down. And we really thought it was going to hold a lot of elk. And in that regard, we were right. There were a lot of elk in there, and we're seeing a lot of elk. But what we didn't take into consideration was, and I think it's probably because it was a rifle hunt and we're thinking it's easy, all we gotta do is see the elk, we'll be able to shoot them. Yeah. We didn't have shooting lanes in there. I mean, there was, the conditions made it, it was tough to get in there, which is why the elk were there. But once we got in there, it wasn't impossible, but it was really difficult to hunt the elk. Yeah. Had it been, had there been no snow, no crunchy snow, and we could have just still hunted through the timber, we'd had a little bit of a better chance just to slip along in there and hope to catch one bedded at 60 yards. But the reality of it was that wasn't a possibility. And so we're left to just 
find them on an open hillside that's within range. And I think in all of that area, there were two hillsides that we could get between 450 and 600 yards from. Everything else was 800 to 1500 yards, and that was it, so. Or we'd have to find them in the trees walking around. <laughs> yeah, which again, we could sit and hope that they came walking by a trail there in the cold, but I wasn't really excited about sitting in seven degree weather in the no. snow and hoping that an elk just happened to walk by me through the trees, so. Yeah. Uh, as far as what you can do, I don't know that there's really a lot you can do to, to hunt that. You either have to relocate and go somewhere else where you have more shooting opportunities, more shooting lanes, more hunting opportunity, or you just have to realize your opportunities are gonna be very, very limited yep. and hope that on one of those two hillsides that we're able to find an elk. Yes. So I guess we'll find out in the next episode if, uh, if that happens or not. You find one. Yeah. So before we go, just a reminder that we've only got one episode left after tonight. And uh, last, last opportunity to sign up to win one of the awesome gear packages we're giving away with, we've got sleeping bag from Peaks Equipment in all of the packages. We've got one of the packages has a full kit of Yeti Go boxes, all three sizes. We've got Yeti Pangas. We've got Mountain Ops gift cards, $200 to spend at Mountain Ops in all of the packages. So cool stuff that we're giving away. And you've got just one more episode to get signed up as well as one more episode to purchase your Destination Elk V6 t-shirt. And you can do both of those things at elk101.com forward slash DEV6. Yep. So, you have a good dad joke? I don't have okay. any good dad yeah. jokes. We're, we're done telling bad <laughs> ones, so you're off the hook. Yeah. All right, we'll catch you uh, in the next episode, which is a reminder is the last episode of DEV6. Donnie's on the board. His second bull of the season. It'll be dark before we make it out, but at least we got the job done before dark.